Hi everyone, it's Lawrence here from Release Hypnosis. Uh, as many of you know, I run a regular workshop called Recording for Hypnotherapists. Uh, and I've done that workshop now for about two years. Uh, and it's great that it still gets a bit of interest, which is fantastic. And really, well, the aim of that workshop is to teach people how to get the best results possible with the equipment that they already have. Um, today's webinar that I'm, I'm wanting to do is really going to cover um, the basics of that, like the first quarter or so of the workshop. So really what I want to be looking at is about what kind of equipment you're going to need to use, what kind of um, software you can download for free in order to be able to record with, to take you through that software, to, to introduce you to that actual um, software itself and to explain what some of the, the features do. Uh, and also to show you how to do your first recording and to export it. Uh, there's obviously a lot more um, that I cover in my workshop outside of that. So if you're interested, then there'll be information at the end of this video about that. But today, if you've done no recording before, you're really keen just to find out how to set up something on your desktop or laptop so that you can record, you're going to be able to do that by the end of this short video. Um, now, people might wonder why you want to learn how to record. And there's a few different reasons, to be honest. I mean, realistically, if you've got clients coming to see you for a particular program, uh, such as the, the fantastic Sheila Granger Virtual Gastric Band, then you know there's going to be sessions that your clients are going to need to do in between your sessions. And so you could hand out Sheila's recordings, uh, but I think everyone would agree that it's probably going to be best if you can do it in your own voice. It's going to be really beneficial for your client and to help your sessions there as well. Um, you may wish to sell recordings online. Uh, a lot of people do make some nice passive income from being able to produce online recordings uh, or alternatively to be able to help to promote themselves with it, whether it's by creating something you can put on Facebook or something that you can offer um, potential clients as a giveaway. I know that recently I was saying to people, sign up to my mailing list and I'll send you a free recording in return. And, and that proved to be quite a, a good way to get in front of people as well. For other people, it may just be to hear how you sound in a session, a bit of self-analysis and self-review. Um, and so you may not want to do much more than what I teach you in this video to be able to record yourself naturally on the fly and to be able to listen back and to, to give some of your own feedback to yourself, I guess, in that sense. Um, but there's lots of reasons why. And I think most people, as they begin to explore this more and more, uh, as they begin to be more comfortable with the techniques, they can find themselves feeling more adventurous and more curious about how they can use these skills in lots of different ways. So really today, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, however, what you're going to get out of today's video is going to definitely be beneficial for you if you've not done this before. Okay, so let's get started. What is the equipment you're going to need? Well, if you're watching this on your desktop uh, computer or your laptop, then that's obviously going to be the key piece of equipment you're going to need. Um, and so most people have got a computer that's going to be very capable of running the software that I'm going to be showing you. Keep in mind, technology is moving rapidly, quickly, advancing in remarkable ways. Um, the phone that you have in your pocket has potentially more computing power than what the entire Beatles discography had to, to be recorded on. So it really goes to highlight the fact that, you know, if you've got a great curious attitude and a bit of an experimental side, then play with the technology that you're going to learn today, you're going to get some really good results. The other thing you might want to consider getting is a microphone. Now, most computers do have built-in microphones. However, they're going to vary in quality. I do tend to find personally that the Mac computers have a better microphone than most PCs. And realistically, you can get microphones fairly inexpensively. Uh, this one is the Meteor Blue. Um, right now, I'm talking into, let's see if I can lift it up without, there it is. That's the, um, the Samsung Meteor microphone. Um, in Australia, you can get them from JB Hi-Fi. You can get them online on eBay fairly easily as well. If there's one additional thing I suggest that you do buy, it is going to be a microphone. Um, now these are USB microphones as well. So they're great to just be able to plug into the computer and to work straight away. Um, one further thing, uh, which I'm not using today, funnily enough, 
but many people might consider is something called a pop filter. Now this is a, a device like this here. Uh, it's a, a mesh that goes around the front of the microphone. And you might wonder why you want this. Well, if you stick your hand out in front of your mouth like this right now and say words beginning with P or T, you'll notice that the expulsion of air there, um, as it hits your hand, you can really feel it. And so imagine what that's like when you're saying those words against a the microphone. They may cause distortion uh, in the recording itself. So one of these things helps to diffuse that air as it comes out. Um, the other thing that you're going to need is a suitable environment to be able to record in. Now, realistically, you may hear quite a bit of background noise at the moment, and that's because uh, I live in a 128 year old school, to be honest. Uh, and I think a lot of the glass in the windows um, are very thin, the original glass, and I have trams and I have cars. It's a very busy street out there. So you can often hear when I'm recording from home and I don't bother to do any post-production or any, any form of, of um, noise reduction or anything afterwards. It can be quite noisy. And so for me, it can be a bit of a challenge sometimes to find a suitable environment to record in. Um, I do have my hypnotherapy rooms. Uh, I often have to choose again, timing when is the best time to record there, simply because it, it, there's neighboring businesses and, and I can hear that too. So really, it's about trying to find an environment that is going to be suitably quiet because the reality is no amount of editing is going to effectively remove things like um, you know, dogs barking, trams going past, um, partners asking you what time you finish or what are you doing, kids screaming, parrots, cats. I, I have two cats who quite frequently uh, will want to try to jump into my videos. So having an environment that is quiet is definitely paramount. Now there are some things that you can do to help achieve that. Uh, if you have an environment that has a lot of soft furnishings, uh, rugs, um, anything where sound can't bounce off the walls and it's essentially what's referred to as a dead room, this is the best environment to be able to record in. Believe it or not, it's gonna sound a bit strange, but your closet, it has lots of clothes in it. If there's space there to do that, then that's a great recording environment. Um, lastly, the software. Now the, the software that I tend to um, use in the workshops and to show people is a piece of software called Audacity. Uh, it is free. Um, you can download it via the website. Um, underneath this video, I'll have a PDF that has notes from this. And within that, you'll find information about where to find Audacity and how to install it. Especially since you're going to want to be able to download another little thing called Lane, which allows you to export in MP3. So there'll be a step-by-step -step in the PDF that will assist you to do that. But download Audacity, uh, install it, and then we're ready to go. So let's go and have a look at the Audacity desktop. Uh, now this is the PC version of it. It sometimes looks a little different in terms of arrangement on the Mac, but all the functions are still there. You just need to look out for where they are on the Mac. So let's have a bit of a look and see. You'll notice up in the top left-hand corner, anyone who's used an old uh, tape deck uh, or Walkman will recognize these controls. Basically, we've got to pause, play, stop, rewind, start, fast forward to end, and record buttons. Um, they're pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can recognize those. Um, underneath that, generally, is some of the audio settings. So it's default set to MME for the audio host. Um, on your Mac, it's probably listed as Core Audio. Um, you can use this pull-down menu here to select your microphone. If you have a USB uh, microphone, um, you can select it from the pull-down menu there, as I have with the blue that I'm using on the PC. Um, next to that is if it's going to be a stereo or mono recording, and the output speakers. Now, over here, you'll notice that there's a, a box marked Click to Start Monitoring. We want to be able to do this in order to determine the recording level. Uh, now, it's really important we try to get that recording level somewhere between negative 6 and negative 3. You'll notice if you go beyond that because it starts to go red. 
Um, so look, all I need to do is to click within that and you can see now that there is a green bar that highlights how loudly I'm talking. Uh, if I move closer to the microphone, you can see that it becomes quite red. If I move further back, uh, it becomes a little bit quieter. Now you don't need to do that. Obviously you don't want to spend your whole recording like this. Um, what you can do though is to adjust the recording level here. So you can see as I do that it becomes quieter and then I can lift that back up that way as well. Um, once you have established what your recording level should be, then you can click on the monitor button again and it will stop monitoring for the time being. Now, there are a whole lot of other functions here, which I'm not going to go into today because um, we won't be utilizing them today. Uh, but there is a whole lot of functionality there around how do you uh, edit, how do you um, shift um, recordings around, um, even how do you do an envelope so you can adjust the volume on recordings as you go through. Um, one thing I will point out is the effects section here. Um, within that, there is a whole lot of different effects that within the workshop we do teach as well. For today though, what I want to do is show you how to just do a straightforward recording. And it really is quite straightforward. Make sure that you have, so jumping back a bit, uh, you can tell this is unscripted, can't you? Um, first thing you want to do when you, before you open Audacity, plug in your USB microphone because the reality is it's not going to pick up your microphone if you plug it in after you've started it. It's just something I've noticed, um, but make sure you plug in your USB microphone before you start Audacity. The next thing you want to do is to make sure that you have selected your USB microphone from that pull down menu. So I've got mine there. Uh, the next thing you want to do, as I mentioned, um, is to monitor to make sure that you're recording at the right level so that I can sit comfortably here and talk without necessarily having to move in out looking like an emu and that really bad double chin on this video as well so I'm sorry about that people um, and if not to adjust with the recording volume there okay they're the key things you need to do in order to be able to use this software so now let's do recording how do we do that really straightforward we click the red record button so i'll do that now and immediately you can start to see that it's recording um, it's creating a waveform of whatever it's recording right now so that if i was to stop by hitting stop that recording has now been made and i can play it back and immediately you can start to see that it's recording. Um, it's creating a waveform of whatever it's recording right now, so that if I was to stop by hitting stop, the next thing you might want to do is figure out how to export that recording. And it's quite easy to do. All you need to do is go into File, the top hand corner there, select Export Audio. Now, You'll notice here that it's got file name and save as type. Provided you've installed your Lane uh, plugin, then you should be able to select your format below. So I'm doing this as a constant MP3. I can export it as 320 KP, uh, KBBS, which is the, the highest quality that MP3 can do. And I can call it test. Now, next thing will come up is metadata tags. And what metadata is, is basically um, when you import an MP3 into a player, quite often you might notice that sometimes it will come up with all the information about that artist already there. That's your metadata. So you don't have to enter information here. However, if you wanted to, you could enter in things like uh, release hypnosis, uh, test, um, year would be 2000. 18, hypnotherapy, hit OK, and that file is now exported to the destination as an MP3 file. So it's really straightforward there. Of course, if you're interested in learning more, uh, and by more I mean things like how do you edit uh, a recording when you make a mistake, how do you do noise reduction, how do you add different effects to it, 
um, how do you add some background music, how do you create vinyl beats, a um, whole lot of things we cover in the workshop. Uh, the next one is going to be on March the 18th at Hypnotherapy HQ on St Kilda Road in Melbourne. Um, I am still working on an online version. It takes a while. I don't like doing video, as you can tell. I'm, I feel really uncomfortable. This is outside my comfort zone, people. Uh, however, um, the online version will come sometime very soon. It's, it's on my marketing plan. It needs to happen. Uh, and so if you are overseas and interested, um, then drop me an email. Let me know, and I'll let you know when that becomes available as well. Um, in the meantime, though, I hope that you have found this short video really useful to teach you how to be able to do some recordings. And please feel free to share with me. I'd be really keen. If there's anything you think I could do to help, drop me a line, let me know. Otherwise, uh, we'll catch you around in some time in the future. Take care.